One of the pervasive challenges of the world today is the issue of environments. Indeed, climate change is the first issue that is truly global, that no one can get away from as everybody is at risk. It is repeatedly said that global warming may be the first challenge in history that human societies across the globe should act upon together as it is a shared threat. This necessitates the need for coordinated global efforts and political will for its effective solution. As a country that is situated in a region where desertification is looming and also that witnessed centuries of war and environmental destruction, Eritrea is conscious of the significance of environmental threats. Eritrea is a country found in the Horn of Africa. It was formally set as a politically and geographically unified country in 1890 during Italian colonialism. After successive colonialism, which sustained a heavy destruction in the socio-economic, political, cultural and environmental aspects of the country, it got its independence in 1991, following 30 years of armed struggle. Since independence, the country has accomplished a lot in the reconstruction endeavor to a point where now, according to the UN report, it is on the track to achieving the Millennium Development Goals relating to gender equality in primary education, child health, maternal health, HIV AIDS, malaria, and other major diseases, access to safe water and environmental sustainability. One of the major priorities of Eritrea is the environment as it is directly linked with the core principles and values of the country, which includes social injustice, self-reliance, and food security. Hence, much has been invested to protect the environment through soil and water conservation efforts, terracing, constructing dumps and check dumps, planting of trees, environmental awareness efforts, and so on. A lion's share of the benefits of the above achievement goes mainly to the children. It is the firm conviction of the people and government of Eritrea that investment in today's children would ultimately guarantee sustainable development in the future. One of the institutions that is working hard for the development of the youth is the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students. The National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students is a national non-governmental organization mandated with organizing the youth and students in all regions of the country, including higher learning institutions. The union actively engages in programs that focus on education, health, gender, youth, empowerment and environmental protection and conservation. One of its areas of operation is organizing the youth in clubs based on their interests and inclinations. As medium where many talents of the youth come together, clubs are often areas where promising futures are conceived. The art club, which includes painters, is thus one of those clubs which operate in all sub-regions and schools branches of the country. In one of its latest projects, this club has taken up on the task of accomplishing the longest painting in the world, which is completed successfully. The project was to prepare the longest painting in the world. Until this moment, the record of the longest painting has been that of Mexico, which measures around 6 kilometers. Therefore, it was suggested to prepare the longest painting in the world by involving young Eritreans. After much discussion, the suggestion was supported by the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students and then was proceeded to making the preparation needed to see the idea become a reality. So National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students, as a claimant of the project, took the matter into its own hands and started working on the overall organization of the task. The event was thought to be significant both in terms of the message it conveys and the opportunities it opens to the painters as well as the general public. The general objective of the event is to demonstrate the participation and the best talent of the Eritrean children and youth and use them to protect and conserve the environment through an artwork. The specific objectives include to demonstrate the use of the best talent of the Eritrean children and youth for the benefit of the community and the world, to enhance awareness of the community in environmental protection through artwork, to attempt the Guinness World Record to the longest continuous canvas painting, as well as symbolize the achievements of Eritrea's development in various areas by holding the Guinness World Records for the longest painting. A technical assisting committee was then created composed of five people. 
The task of this committee would be to oversee the execution of the project according to the plan as per standard for the record. In this respect, the task of selecting suitable artists to train the children, quality control of the painting, approval of the team, selection of children painters, follow-up of the actual painting process, the purchase of the material needed for the project was mandated to this committee. Therefore, a professional painter, Mr. Habtom Mehretab, was selected through bidding who would train the students. In order to proceed with the project, there had to be a team around which the whole activity could be galvanized into action. This was also the task of the selected trainer who came up with the team Pollution Free World, presented in a sketch as a prototype for the actual painting. And what better team could there be than one that would address the most pressing global challenge that needs a global solution? The theme was on the environment, and this is very timely. And I'm impressed to see that the youngsters have not only encapsulated the issue of environment, and I think they're going to be a lesson to, to all of us in terms of uh, us making sure that the environment is sustainable and we leave this for the future generations. As far as the participation of the youth was concerned, the idea was to involve as many youth as possible. In this respect, the task of organizing the children was naturally mandated to the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students, as its organization runs down to the smallest administrative unit of the country. This made it the most suitable institution for the task. What made this project perhaps unique is its symbolism. Just as the project represents the message of raising awareness by involving the youth, the most important players, to the world's most urgent and important problem, environmental pollution, it also symbolizes the need for unity both in Eritrea and the world by involving children from the six regions and all ethnic groups of Eritrea, and also from both genders. Accordingly, 827 students between the age of 12 and 17 were selected to be the participants of the project, of whom 10% or 83 students were females. After an orientation was given by the coordinators of the project about the overall task and its significance, the children were then given training about the basic painting skills, which included mixing colors, how to handle brushes, and the different sketches of the painting. As can be suspected, training these children so many skills needed to perform the task in such a short time to bring them acting to the single tune in harmony could never be an easy task. The task was very good and I gained a lot of knowledge on how to use the different painting materials, colors and the paint. I would like to thank the trainer and I hope our work would break the record. But how do you put the idea of drawing almost 7.2 kilometers of painting to reality in a way so organized as to give a coherent image to convey a single message? Not an easy task. One needs not to be around to guess that it would demand a meticulous and painstaking planning and execution with tenacious effort. Towards this end, a place spacious enough that it would allow flexibility and movement of hundreds of children and scores of coordinators and supervisors in the preparation of kilometers of painting had to be secured. And the most conducive place was found to be the expo ground. After this, all the painting materials required for the event were ordered and purchased on time from local market as well as imported from external commercial sources. All in all, 9,010 canvases with 1 meter height and 80 centimeter width, 9,000 brushes, 4,000 acrylic colors of 500 milliliter, including green, black, red, yellow, blue and white colors, 352 big brushes, 484 cans of glue, each one liter, 100 pieces of cutter, 365 meters of synthetic, 65 gallons of wood glue and white wall paint, each three liters, 210 pieces of plates, 60 cans of vinyl, each 500 milliliter, 36 markers, 35 big and medium buckets were brought to the expo ground. Before the actual drawing was made, the theme of the painting was divided into seven continuous and interrelated phases 
that gives complete pictures about the trends and processes affecting our environment and the efforts needed to create the ideal environment free from pollution. Each phase was represented in around one kilometer of painting. Accordingly, the first phase represents when our planet was full of green gardens and suitable for living things, a blanket of vegetation cover home for numerous animals, some of which are extinct, unpolluted air, as well as clean and undisturbed environment sustaining biodiversity was depicted in this part. This phase shows the world environment as it once was. The second phase represents the early settlement of humans. After the long time of complete harmony between the environment and the people living on it, humans started to have a permanent settlement and sedentary life, and with this grow, the dependence on the environment. The pictures in this part include permanent human residences and farming activities that represent the early stage of the pressure exerted on the environment by subtle human activities. The third phase explains about the advancement of human activities shown by pictures of development and industrial expansion. And as a consequence of our actions, the part shows the balance of nature started to be disrupted. In this part, animals are disappearing and the areas once covered by trees are less as human actions had started to take its toll on the environment. The growing capability of human capacity to explore the environment constitutes the central point of the fourth phase. The painting in this part shows different factories and different vehicles emitting smokes, ships spilling oil in the ocean, many weapons like tanks, warjets, missiles and so on. This part represents the greedy and unsustainable exploitation of the environment and also the many harmful activities of human beings. And the result is the destruction of the environment depicted by pictures of dead fish, very few trees and animals, and polluted air in the painting. In the fifth phase, it is shown the world's effect of the greed-induced human activities. Here, the children's imagination has indeed captured the most serious consequences of environmental pollution and unsustainable exploitation. And they have tried to represent this in the pictures of dry land with no trees and animals in sight, and the immigration of people leaving behind their home due to droughts and their failing to make ends meet. Sooner or later, humans have to stand up together to address the issue of environment for their mutual benefits. And that is the message of the sixth phase in the painting, as coming together naturally entails the acknowledgement of the common challenge and hence awareness, this part represents this message through the pictures of different human races holding hand in hand and start a campaign to rebuild the environment through afforestation and conserving the environment. Phase 7, the last phase of the painting, prophetically shows the result of the endeavor made by humans to preserve the environment. And this is the ideal world where many animals have returned, the earth is covered by trees, clean coastal areas where fish live in comfort, and beautiful human habitats. The serenity and tranquility, and also the total harmony of living things, and the environments are depicted in the ideal world, pollution-free world. The painting was concluded through a division of tasks where the children from each region were given a part from the task. Each region, therefore, was apportioned a four days of work subsequently, except for children of Makal region, who involved in all the days of work. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm uh, Saifa Berhan. And... Um, I'm by, by a professor geologist and I have worked extensively in the environment area and I have witnessed you know the process of the painting by the youngsters of Eritrea so it was a very impressive uh, feat not only are they from different parts of the country but they are also very young and I have seen their commitment which was very important now seven kilometers I felt as, as I said it was a big task but in 7.66 kilometers, these children express the passing of time and how we were poisoning our planet, how we had changed it, and now what the future lies and how they intended to make it green again. So my impression was quite uh, 
heartening and I was very glad I was participating as a witness. All along the process of painting, the works of the children were constantly inspected and followed by witnesses. These witnesses are influential persons in various fields and are in no way affiliated with the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students. The five witnesses to the longest painting in the world were therefore artist Mikhail Adonai, a world-class painter and writer, Mrs. Senaith Lijam, Director General of Land Transportation, Dr. Mikhail Gabrehuet, Technical Advisor in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Seife Berhe, Manager of Global Resource, and Dr. Tadde Samhari, Executive Director of the Board for Higher Education. The mandate of these witnesses was to conduct a thorough follow-up of the task and to ensure the authenticity of the project as per the guidelines, and finally to give their witness on the details and facts of the task accomplished. As such was their responsibility, they had to be present from the beginning to the final measurement of the painting, which they did. Yeah, first I am totally pleased to be one of the witnesses and um, I have been following the, this work like uh, uh, two months ago, starting from October up to the end of it, like first week of November. So I have been coming here like, every other day to see the children working um, and uh, I have witnessed it that uh, about 70 to 75 children per shift were working daily and they are uh, between the age of uh, 12 to 17. They are all categorized as uh, children. My total impression on this uh, uh, endeavor or on this exercise is that the way the, the kids, the youth, the young artists uh, taught about it to, be, to, to, you know, to break the record and uh, register their uh, uh, artistic activity as the longest canvas painting by children in the world. So they want to break the, the record already registered and uh, this is really a great attempt and uh, as a witness I can say they have uh, successfully made it. Uh, my name is Dr. Mikhail Gabriot. I'm a member of our staff in the Ministry of Health. Yes, uh, it's astounding. Uh, you know, when I was first asked to be a witness to this feat, uh, fantastic fit, I said I was a little bit uh, skeptical. I didn't think it would be achieved in such a short period of time. But I was willing to give my advice and encourage them and uh, see how they go through the process. And um, I was uh, present when they first started and uh, I was visiting them uh, rather frequently and see the children coming together and uh, tackling this, this uh, enormous challenge. And they did it with such excitement and such uh, fun. I was uh, quite encouraged and, um, and I felt it was remarkable. And because they had, they had the tenacity to continue working. And of course, as they do, they were also enjoying themselves. All in all, it took 300 working hours of 57 days to complete the painting. But what does 57 days of labor achieve in the end? As a witness with uh, an experience of more than three decades in the field of fine arts, uh, I feel uh, so proud what I have witnessed. My impression is uh, well, the painting is uh, uh, unique. Uh, expressive and magnificent. Uh, well, it's, uh, I think uh, it, 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 it has a very uh, good uh, uh, team. The title is, I think, uh, Polish and Free uh, World. So the children have done uh, their best to, uh, to depict or to reflect what they have wanted to say. To make the attempt to the Guinness World Records a reality, all the necessary precautions were made to follow and satisfy the guidelines of the institution. With this basic understanding, the measurement ceremony was conducted on the 26th of November 2011 in the presence of high-ranking governmental officials, religious leaders, members of the diplomatic code, parents and invited guests.
The ceremony was officially opened by Mr. Kasai Gabrahiwat, a governor of the central region, Eritrea. The measurement process was done by laying the painted canvas down on an asphalted road on the outskirts of Asmara. The painting was actually measured on the ground by professional surveyors and engineers and with professional equipment coming from the National Mapping and Information Center. The process took around four hours starting from 10.26 a.m. in the morning up to 2.36 p.m. in the afternoon and was inspected by the witnesses who physically took part in the measurement process. And the measurement was confirmed by the signature of the witnesses to be 7.166 kilometers long, the longest painting in the world. So uh, this technically is the longest. Then again, we have to abide by the strict rules of the uh, Guinness Book of Records, and we felt we did it to the, to the, to the last wall. And uh, we had uh, expert uh, surveyors, two engineers, surveyors, and ourselves. And we want to make sure that we measure every millimeter of the, of the painting. <laughs> The measurement was conducted from 10.26 a.m. up to 2.36 p.m. for four hours in 47 different spots. We took more time on the places where there were twists and turns while it was relatively easier when it was a straight line. The longest single measurement taken was 647 meters and the shortest was 19 meters. We, the witnesses, were involved in the complete process of measurement and hereby declare our testimony that the painting was measured at 7.166 kilometers. The occasion was filled with festive mood for the children who involved in the painting. It was indeed a deserving reward. For the invited attendants, the occasion was a marvelous experience. The event was also given an extensive media coverage. بمجمر حسمي إفريم هاي المال كأوصلك أبز سلبي سالي. I have got satisfaction by involving in the project. I'm proud that the record which Mexico held until now will be broken by Eritrea. بمجمر أجزي إيرتراخ صورة على ما حابي نسمعك. Um, and really the children from all over Eritrea because uh, to have all six Zubas involved and have children. Um, participate and this is really their work. Um, it really is a wonderful effort and um, I really hope that you know once it gets to Guinness when the news is really announced that it has broken the world record I think that would really be a great thing for Eritrea and a great thing for the children as well. I'm Sandra Tyler Hayward and I'm the British Ambassador to the State of Eritrea. I think it's a fantastic event. The children look e enthusiastic. The painting is brilliant. And it's very innovative to have a painting. I've never been on a painting that's over seven kilometers long on a road. And it's really, it's really, it's a really a good event. The last record's about six kilometers, so providing it can be accurately, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that yes, it will be in the Guinness Book of Records. And the children here deserve it for the work they've done. It's a really good event. My name is Bord Hopland, and I'm the Norwegian ambassador to Eritrea. I walked all the way uh, all 7.2 kilometers. Mm -hmm. I, I had to because I had to find my own flower. Oh. I, uh, I actually visited the study uh, when they were painting this and, uh, and I, I, I was allowed to paint one flower. So I found it. I think this is very, very impressive. And, and the most impressive part is that so, mu so many young uh, pe children and people uh, have participated in this, uh, bringing them from all parts of Eritrea. Uh, and uh, doing this in one month's time, it's, it's quite impressive. And, and it really tells a story. Uh, it brings out uh, a clear message of um, how uh, we need to behave 
as human beings in order to be able to survive uh, uh, on, on, the, on the Earth. The event is indeed significant at different levels. To, you know, to break the record and uh, register their uh, uh, artistic activity as the longest canvas painting by children in the world. So they want to break the, the record already registered and uh, this is really a great attempt and uh, as a witness I can say they have successfully made it. I have walked all the way and observed the painting and I found it to be a well executed work. The painting tells a story on how the activities of humans affect the world. I hope the painting will inspire the user. The task of the longest painting is a manifestation of the growth and organization of the arts club, proving that it has put the skill, dedication and perspective of the youth to a whole new level and beyond. It created a conducive atmosphere where the painters, mainly the youth and children, would be able to exercise and express their artistic talents for a noble objective. <laughs> It was very important and educational because we got the chance to be introduced with other artists and share experience, especially with renowned painters. The painting, more than introducing Eritrea, will also show Eritrea's excellence. <laughs> Be, uh, would be done by, by these uh, young school children. And the most in interesting thing is the theme itself. Yeah, the, the theme is, is uh, really interesting because it's, it, it's, it's about a pollution free world. So, one, I would imagine that uh, this will boost the, the talent of, of, of the school children uh, to, to increase their, uh, their activities in, in, uh, in painting. And second, they will create, uh, it will create awareness among these school children also on how to protect their environment. And above all, uh, it gives a message to the general public that... Uh uh, this painting is done by the children of the Eritrea. And that is, the, that, that is something big that the children of a country is breaking the record of the world. And I'm very happy that as a part of this team, UNICEF did their part the, to, to reach to this level and to achieve this, this huge achievement. And uh, thousands and thousands of children, it's a total of I think three to four thousand of children were lining the streets and uh, that in itself is an achievement. But again, we'll have to see. But we believe we have broke the, rec the world record for the longest canvas painting to depict a pollution-free world. And that's a vision our children hopefully will keep for a long, long time. The project's effect on the children involved in it and the young people of the same age is perhaps impossible to know. However, there is no doubt that the painting has left a deep impression on the participants that anything is possible, even fighting pollution. Materializing such a long painting with such a big effort on their part is undoubtedly a source of inspiration, instilling in their receptive mind that nothing is impossible and out of reach. If you come together, define your problem, put your mind to it and work hard. Isn't that what the world needs for its challenge, one of which is saving our environment? Such a lesson and message in the heart of our future generation is indeed the strong point made by the project. I found the experience worthwhile and it has influenced me and my peers a lot as we have been able to share experience with people across the country. It is my belief that this will inspire other aspiring artists. There is no doubt that our work will be competitive in the world. I, I do some painting myself and I was rather surprised that some of them were extremely good paintings. Anyway, it's, uh, the, my impression is that these students have now impressed upon themselves the need to protect the environment. 
برقص تالو ماتي حدا ناي سرح تباله ناي سرح توافينا كمية كعلو كمية كحجر ثانس كمية كا سمكات عبي سمكات اسمها حجر كان كمية كات عبي لما نسيت مرة تامي ماتي. For the youth, the lesson is how to work hard for personal as well as collective achievement. It has also shown that there is a potential for young people to rise to professional artists. As the proverb goes, aim for the moon. If you miss, you will be among the stars. If you work hard, you will achieve. In Thai, in English, try to choose the moon. If you miss it, you will be among the stars. How do you tell them, Shaka? All the letters are in Thai. 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 The longest painting is also a testimony to Eritrea's will and commitment in developing the youth who are the future of the world and also in dealing with the environment issues. The event is significant in terms of incepting environmental awareness in the minds of the youth. It communicates the concern of Eritrea on the issue of environment with the rest of the world. I'm very happy to be part of this occasion. يعني ربنا مد في أيامنا لحد ما حضرنا هذا الاتحاد يعني في كل يوم ينجز إنجاز جديد ومشرف. Breaking the record in the competition will give Eritrea a chance to show how it is marching in the road towards development. We as a supporter of the organizations of the uh, youth association uh, with collaboration with some other partners who are involved. Uh, so the, at the level of the planning, everybody was involved. Then it went through the level of implementation. Of course, procurement was a huge thing because most of these staff are brought from outside of the country. Uh, so thanks to the colleagues who support us in the logistic supply, also um, uh, the, the the way of the understanding and working smoothly with the implementing partner that is also commendable and that was a real success which we achieved it and it is today is the, the day that we see the outcome of that. سألتيني بحكي زول عزي مسوم كوين وخمزة عينت كسل كل الصحقوس دي يعني. I'm happy that my son could involve in such a project and I would like to compliment the trainers and the organizers. اليوم سئلوا من قعوات واس قعوات النساء تمسي مع التمول التمنيتي مالتي. The project stands as a testimony to the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students living up to its responsibility and expectation in the task of developing the youth and organizing them towards the issue of utmost urgency and importance. It has proved that guided activism bears fruits and enables inspiration to transcend across the world. Starting from early in the morning, the children have worked hard to make this ceremony a success. Parents and officials, and mainly the witnesses, have also worked over four hours to measure the painting, and it has paid off, as it is successfully completed. Therefore, I would like to extend my thanks to everybody on behalf of the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students.